right. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you may be. Thank you for joining us. Another episode of Catching Up with Jacob, episode 194. We're approaching 200, and he's been on, I would say, almost 99% of them. Jacob Prash, how are you, Jacob? Well, in Jesus, looking forward to his coming. I'm getting fed up with this place, but he is coming, and I am looking forward to it. Well, we'll be caught up to meet the Lord in the air soon, by God's grace and his mercy. Thank you, Jacob, for being here. David Lister, down in the South. How are you, David? Well, I'm feeling much better being back home. Things are back in order and uh, looking forward to the future. Looking forward to the future. Praise the Lord. Well, down, well, not too far from me, off the 210 freeway. Not going to disclose exactly where he lives, but it's about an hour and a half, perhaps, from my house. Uh, give or take traffic. Jay, how are you today? Probably a little bit cooler than you are. It's only 89 degrees here in the uh, valley. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know what temperature is out there, but yeah, I'm doing good. It's good to be here. Hey, man, thank you. It, it's cooled down to like in the 90s. So, you know, we'll take it for now. We'll take it for now. But uh, thank you for being here, Jay. God bless you, brother. Thank you. And yeah, uh, 72 here. Well, that's got the blessings to you guys. How's the humidity? Uh, very low. Very low. All right. Well, that is cool. I'm speaking of in here. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm going to go to the beach. something out there. Yeah. We'll probably go to the beach a little bit later just to cool oh, down because it's too hot. Uh, well, it's not that hot in Australia. Davey, how are you? It's cooling down there. Yeah, doing pretty good, but the weather's getting a bit better. We've had some. Hey, we've man. had the sun out the last few days. It's been good. Oh, praise God. You know, I always envy Davey's got the sweater on the days I want to have a sweater. <laughs> You know, and uh, he's wearing a sweater today. So God bless you, Davey. Thank you so much for being with us. And I want to welcome everyone who's watching live and those who will watch later. And uh, we want to welcome you in the name of the Lord Jesus and him. We preach and we preach him uh, his life, his death and his resurrection and his return. And as we catch up with the believers here with Jacob, we want to catch up with you. Thank you for your questions and comments that you'd make every episode. You make it worthwhile for us to be here. And uh, you can watch us on different platforms, including the one that uh, a lot of people have been going to, Rumble and Morial TV, Morial.tv.org. And of course, there's Vimeo, there's Telegram. And uh, of course, there is, I, I don't want to say it because it's going to get people riled up, YouTube and Facebook. Yes, we're still there for now. And um, welcome, everyone, in the name of the Lord. If you want to listen to Jacob and other teachers like myself and Sandy Simpson and David and other pastors who are there, uh, as we add more to them, on podcasts, you can go to the podcast schedule and you can find out more of the platforms that we've been on, Buzzsprouts, you can find it on iTunes, you can find them on Google Podcasts, you name it, it's probably there. Like I said, it, we're we're almost as much um, in podcast as any other ministry, and uh, it's quite a great undertaking there. But you can find Jacob there. You can download and you can listen to it on your phone as you jog, as you wash dishes, as you talk to, as you walk, go on along the walk, and, uh, and you share these things with other believers and non-believers as well. Avail yourself of those um, those absolutely free resources, and you can go, go to memorial.org to find more information about that, missions and outreaches and the work of the Lord, especially in Jerusalem, especially in Israel, uh, under the conditions that we're in today. And you can find more what Memorial is doing in India, Israel, um, Thailand, Philippines, lots of different places, including America as well. So we want to welcome you in the name of the Lord. And um, Jacob, any announcements that you have in mind today? Announcements. Well, we will be speaking with Pastor Tim Leach on the 24th of August at Knowles Green Church near Preston, England. Details are on the Moriel website, moriel.org, or on the Moriel itinerary page. It will be Pastor Tim Leach and myself. That's on the 24th. The following day, the 25th, I am at Hattersley Baptist Church, a Morial affiliated church with Pastor Mark Jackson. That is located in um, Hyde, Hyde on the outskirts of Manchester. The details are also on the Morial website. Details of the upcoming Morial conferences in Scotland and in England, when I'll be joined by both. Tim Leach and Pastor Marco Quintana from California. Those details are also posted. Those will be in early November. The visit to Borno in the Czech Republic is also uh, posted for people who are in Europe who 
can't avail themselves of upcoming if you're in the Czech Republic. We do have some people from Poland who are coming as well. Um, that Those are the up, upcoming events at the moment. Amen. So we got podcasts, we got itinerary, you got different ministries, you got mission trips. Uh, Jacob, you're coming uh, You're coming back to the U.S., I think, in November, right? November, uh, yes. So I'll be and with you. And, you'll be with us. Yeah, so I'll be with you in the U.K., and then you're coming back here to the U.S. And uh, yes. Jimmy, uh, we got a new uh, updated channel on YouTube. Did you want to mention that real quick? Absolutely. So we have a new channel. It is called Morial Chapel. All of the Bible studies are being loaded there, uh, trying to keep uh, the two separated so that you'll always have access to the great teachings that Jacob brings, the great teachings that Sandy brings. So please, if you haven't already, subscribe to that channel on YouTube so that uh, we can get it to uh, the next stage in that channel's evolution. Amen. Hey, can you do me a favor, Davey or you can put it, can you guys put the, uh, the actual link to that YouTube channel on the comment section so we, people can get to it. We want people to subscribe there. You know how YouTube loves to attack uh, Bible-believing Christians and teachers and pastors that, that preach the truth. And so we're constantly being harassed, I guess, cyberly, you could say that. And so we want to put our teachings in a place where it is Bible teaching and people can avail themselves of that in case, like always, in case they come after us in different platforms. That's where we um, we we diversify in platform, I guess you can take it from the financial sector, the diversify your content. Because uh, people ask, why are you so many channels? Well, we got our own websites. We got our own website, memorialtv.memorial.tv. Uh, but we're also on the platforms that people are mostly frequent. And so we're there just in case one goes down, the other one's there. So you can continue to do that. So, and, and all said and done, Jacob, let's catch up. Let's catch up before we uh, uh, before we hit the major topics. It is August 9th, 2024. It's been a year and one day since the Lahaina fires in Maui. And even a year after that, we don't know how they started. We don't know how it happened. Uh, people are still suffering from the fact that they lost their home. They lost their land. I think they got $700 from the U.S. government. Um, you know, while the government of uh, Hawaii is going to have a celebration of um, Ukraine. And they're going to raise some money to send to Ukraine, no money for the, um, for the victims of the fire. And, um, but there is a $4 billion settlement that's coming in, which most people think it's just going to be for, um, you know, those who are going to build and rebuild uh, Lahaina. I don't know if people are going to get any of that, uh, but your thoughts on it a year later, and most people have forgotten about it. I think if you mentioned it now, most people will be like, what happened there? August 8th, 2023, uh, lots of people died. Lots of people lost their home. Uh, but your thoughts a year later. Lahaina was a place I know or knew well, very well. You can rebuild it, but you cannot reconstruct what was there. The buildings were too historical. They went back to the early years of statehood. You have buildings going back to the whaling industry. You have churches going back to the previous century. You have historical buildings, all buildings, most of them made of wood. You're never going to be able to build anything more than a reprograph of what was there. It's just going to be impossible. The Heine can be rebuilt, but it cannot be reconstructed as to what, what it had been. It's never going to be what it was again. But again, the area was cordoned off. People were not given much by way of information or investigation. What caused this? How did it happen? It was handled again politically. It was not handled in a straightforward manner. It was it was politically orchestrated response by the state government. The government of Hawaii is one of the most left-wing governments in the United States. It's similar to Illinois. It's run by left-wing people. Um, the people who are there are politically extremely naive. Yeah, I'd even say extremely stupid. They'll vote for someone like Harold, Harold the, the ridiculous senator. Oh my God, yeah. Who said a woman has a right to be believed simply because she's the right to because she has that right as a woman? So a male is guilty who's accused of something simply because he's a male because a woman said so. This is a woman who does not belong in public office. Um, whether or not she belongs in jail or, or, or the mental institution, that can be argued. But she does not belong in the Senate. Um, she's an absurd woman, but people vote for her. 
when you have left wing governments, when you have those kinds of people in office and a public who votes for people like that in office, don't expect honesty, don't expect efficiency, don't, ex- don't expect integrity. You're not going to get it. People who live, and again, I'm not a Republican, but people who live in blue states and in blue cities who are plagued with crime, who are plagued with dilapidation, who are plagued with deteriorating infrastructure, you're getting what you voted for. I have no sympathy for people who vote for those kinds of politicians. You got what you voted for. And what's happened in Lahaina, tragic as it is, is an exact picture of what you have in Hawaii. It's a left-wing state populated by largely stupid people who vote for their own death. Yeah, Obama still uh, lives there, even though he believes in climate change, and um, well, he has a nice house near the yeah. near near the water. I think he 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 doesn't quite believe that. Uh, David Lister, you sent me uh, a, a link about this four billion dollar settlement that is coming. The lawsuit against probably everybody that uh, contributed, they believe contributed to the fire. We don't even know how it started. So I don't even know how they can get four billion dollars. But do you think the people are going to get anything of this? Well. Maybe they'll get a two bed condo and a high rise or something, you know. So, but th- th- this money, it's interesting that the people that will be paying this four billion dollars out, billion, uh, it's going to be the school system, the cable system, the phone system, the actual state of Hawaii. And so it's, but we don't know exactly how it's going to be handed out. I I thought I saw Larry Ellison's name in there, but I know there's all sorts of tech billionaires who acquire large amounts of property in Hawaii, somehow are involved uh, giving donations and things like this. He's, uh, there's Bezos is over there. Ellison is over there. There's a number of tech billionaires giving money, so they'll probably be in the middle of this somewhere. So what trickles down? That's going to be a good question. Who's going to handle the money and do the payouts and determine the building and what's going on? That's another question. You know, so some interesting things, but a $4 billion settlement. See what's coming now. A year, it's a year in a day, and we still don't know exactly what happened. But we know there's a billion dollar, four billion dollar settlement. Uh, it may be Jacob, one of those settlements where, oh, this will fix it. Let's move on. Probably. Oh, you know. Yeah, yeah the, yes, and I'm sure the bishops of state will be the ones that pay each check individually to everyone. Yeah, most likely. <laughs> most likely. Uh, Jacob, three hundred and seven days. Has a big trust there. Yes. 307 days since October 7th today, and 1,200 Jews were killed. 251 people were taken hostage, which many of them have probably died by now. And uh, some of them have been returned, but most of them have not, including Americans, including Thai and obviously Israelis. Media says nothing about it, like it never even happened. And the government, our government, does nothing about it because even though there's Americans there, and yet the war continues. Now we have Iran threatening the uh, Israel at any time now, and it's a co- coincidentally enough they believe that by holding back and letting them suffer and being prepared is a way of punishing them, which is a weird way of thinking. Uh, but Jacob, the Monday, August twelfth is Tisha B'Av, and it's interesting yeah. they're at a great threat today with the day coming up in which they remember and they commemorate uh, terrible things that have happened. Uh, give us a round out, Jacob, of uh, Tisha B'Av. I know you've done some studies on that, uh, but if you can just remind us of the Jewish conscious of what Tisha B'Av means to them under this great threat that they feel today. Okay, Tisha B'Av is the day of devastation in the annual Jewish liturgical calendar. It is not an original holy day prescribed for observation in the book of Leviticus chapter 23 or 24. Rather, it is a day of historical remembrance based on national disasters. Both the first and second temple 
Solomon's temple and Zerubbabel's temple were destroyed the same day. The Babylonians destroyed it to Shabaav in 585 BC, and in 70 AD, the Romans destroyed the second. It is interesting to know that the early Christians, as we see in Peter's epistle, identified Rome with Babylon. The mystery religions of Babylon found their way into the Roman pantheon via Pergamum. And uh, the early church saw Rome as Babylon in a spiritual or religious sense. The Babylonians destroyed the first temple, the Romans the second, on the same day, under the same kind of scenario. The rejection of Jeremiah, the rejection of Yeshua. And of course, it fulfilled the prophecies of Daniel chapter 9, that the Messiah would come and die before the second temple would be destroyed. But continuing with that, and even preceding that, most of the most tragic days in Jewish history took place then, even before the destruction of the first temple, when the generation of Israel was forbidden or restricted from entering the promised land after the Exodus, when the ten, when the ten spies brought back the false reports, that was Tisha B'Av. You can't enter your land. That was Tisha B'Av. Again, both temples being destroyed. World War I, which had tremendous ramifications for European Jewry, began on Tisha B'Av. In 1290, the Jews were expelled from England on Tisha B'Av. The Spanish Inquisition with Ferdinand and Isabella and the expulsion of the Jews from Spain began Tisha B'Av. In the Holocaust, several of the most significant events in the Holocaust happened on Tisha B'Av. One, the first killings in the death factory of Treblinka. First trains arrived at the Shabbat of Treblinka, but also the final fall of the Warsaw Ghetto Jewish resistance. The German attack commenced on the Shabbat. Most significantly in the Holocaust, Hermann Goering's final solution was signed on the 8th of Av, the Shmini of Av, not the, not the, day, the eve. Of, of the Shabbat, it was signed by Goering. And in some countries of the world, it was on the 9th. It was on the 9th when, when he signed it. So the final solution of the Jews, again, the Shabbat. Um, there is a uneasiness in Israel at the moment, even among some Jewish believers, that the Iranian attack or a general war involving Iran and Hezbollah, and possibly Syria, could take place on the 12th of August because it is the Shabbat. We shall have to wait and see, but that is the present climate in Israel. Hmm, very good, Jacob. And of course, the Biden and Harris administration, which, by the way, have, have you seen Joe Biden? I don't even know where he's at. He hasn't come out. It's usually been... It's not kept in, again. Yeah. Uh, have called for de-escalation. Have called for de-escalation. Uh, because Iran is threatening to wipe out uh, American military bases. So yeah. today, even Blinken came out and says, we will support Israel. Uh, Jacob, how much is that? You know, how much you believe that? How much you trust them? I don't think the word trust is even cause should be considered. But when Benjamin Netanyahu was here, he was scolded by both uh, Harris and Biden about the fact that uh, they needed to stop and, and they use a foul language, BSing him, I guess you can call it that way. And, um, and, and of course, they threatened to, like, uh, you know, take away some uh, ship and, shipment of armaments, et cetera, et cetera. Um, by the way, Netanyahu did admit that that happened. He met with Trump as well, which went a lot better, he says. But he does expect Americans to support him. Um, how much trust did they really have in the Harris and Biden administration? Okay. That is another factor. Netanyahu and the Israelis are smart enough to realize if they are going to do anything preemptively, they must do it before the American election. There is a reasonable chance Trump will lose and that Harris, who is a stooge for the ultra-left, 
is, is like like Biden, she does not have the mental wherewithal to be president or be anything else. She'll call for an embargo on arms exports to Israel. They know that she is quite capable of doing it. She's all well, you said that she's open to it. We have to remember that Waltz, her vice presidential partner, um, endorsed campaign for Ulrich. It was not only anti-Zionist, but anti-Semitic. Um, the congresswoman from Minnesota, Islamic congresswoman, vehemently anti-Israel, anti-Semitic, and Walls has endorsed her for Congress and campaigned for her. Um, and yet there are such ridiculously, absurdly self-hating American Jews, particularly the media, and Dreyfus and Ben Stiller, who will support Harris, despite the fact that Walls is his is her partner as the vice presidential candidate, and he endorsed Olmert. Um, so the Israelis know that if Harris comes to power, American friendship with Israel will not be what it was, and America's real relationship and alliances with America can no longer be trusted. So if they're going to attack preemptively, they have an incentive an impetus to do it before the election. That further raises the, I don't know, probabilities, but the possibilities of something happening of a preemptive nature between now and the election. That's right. David, what do you think? I mean, we have, we're sitting here on August 9th, 2024, uh, almost a year. It's going to be almost a year, about 60 some, uh, 50 some days before the year uh, when we remember October 7th. Uh, and the terrible day that was for the Jewish people, and as, as well as Americans who were sequestered and died. Um, but it's been almost a year. Not, it, we're on the verge of something that we may, may saw it coming, but now we believe it's 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 now here. Is this Tehran is now armed to the teeth because of the uh, administration here in the U.S., ready to go. And Israel is very vulnerable at this time, not only with internal problems, but external problems. And basically all nations seems to be turning against her. Yeah, well, Iran loves to have other people die for them. So if they do anything, I'm wondering if it would really come from them. I mean, ultimately it does come from them, but the Houthis, the Syria and over there, that that could be the way they do this to keep their oil pumping and to keep their country intact. But it would be much less limited because of the vast armaments that Iran does have. But um, it would be uh, tragic if they do attack because they have that Krog Island which is very open, that would shut off all of their oil, which would send oil spiking. And then on top of that, they could shut down nuclear reactors and uh, more than likely a lot of power stations, which could send the whole country into darkness very quickly because it's um, so. And we don't know China's reaction, Russia's reaction. Everybody else's. This is like could be lighting a match for World War Three. Who knows? It's just so many variables and everything. Just pray for the pre peace of Jerusalem. It's the best thing that Christians can do at this point. But these men are they're driven demonically, and uh, the whole world is. I was I've said a couple times. Those the Muslims believe. It's their time. People in uh, that are demonic in many aspects believe it's their time. We're seeing people, uh, the trans and the homosexuals believe this is their time. That they're they're looking for their person that will deliver them and bring them great freedoms and the, and the persecutions of Christians and Muslims. And we know who that one coming is. Yeah, the man of lawlessness, for sure. Uh, Jane, I want to go back to you. UK and Egypt have shut off uh, uh, basically airspace to go into Iran. They don't want to go into Iran. They shut off all the planes going in that direction. You have more countries 
uh, adding on to that. So they they believe something is coming, probably maybe this weekend, maybe next week. We don't know. It's in the Lord's hands. But uh, that military conflict, um, how do you see it playing out? If Iran gets involved, do you see, obviously, other terrorist organizations jumping in from Syria, from Egypt, from um, Iraq, uh, definitely Hezbollah. Of course, we have Hamas. Uh, but this will be a detrimental war for Israel. Jacob, still with us? Yeah, Jacob. Your question didn't come across very clearly. Okay, I thought you were muted because you didn't even respond, so I didn't know if you heard me or not. Um, let's... Uh, UK and Egypt issue alerts that they're not yes. going to do your space anymore. Right? So yeah. uh, th that's that's for sure that's happening. But now you have other nations who might say, hey, this is we're not going to do it. Might, it may be this weekend and maybe next week. We're going to shut off that uh, that airspace because of the risk. Not only you have um, Delta Airlines and other airlines who don't fly to Tel Aviv for now, uh, but do you see it coming? Do you, do you see something? And it's, from, it's, it's diplomatic evacuations. It's not yeah, the thing. It's what foreign ministries are doing. Um, the Canadians have ordered all non-essential diplomatic personnel and their families out of Israel. Um, yeah, I was going to get to that point, but I, I was just referring to the fact that airspace yeah. is being shut off. Obviously, it's indica indicative of the possibility of something being impending that could have drastic ramifications for or for commercial air travel. But it is only one of the things that is raising the spectrum of something going to take place. The deployment of American aircraft carrier groups in the Persian Gulf and in the Eastern Mediterranean and the diplomatic evacuation, evacuations, as well as a number of countries, including America, Britain, and others, ordering their civilians to leave Lebanon. So it is just another another facet of the same apprehension that something can be impending quite soon. The, uh, the, the, basically, the elimination of these terrorists have really caused the Muslim world to be up in arms about this. Obviously, you have uh, Ismail Hanaya was yes. eliminated. Uh, you have Mohammed Deef uh, uh, eliminated. Salib al-Ruri eliminated. Uh, maybe Sinwar is next. Um, uh, I'm sure Galloway was very sad. Uh, yes. to the MP from the UK, George Galloway, for losing his dear friend. Uh, but do you see more of that coming, Jacob, when they, you, you're going to have the yeah. key leaders in Hamas or Iran? Absolutely. Or Sinwar has been chosen as the leader of Hamas now. And right. people were celebrating that in Lebanon, which is really Hezbollah territory. I believe the Israelis should try to take out Nasrallah in Lebanon. I believe that would be a blow, uh, certainly to Hezbollah. And, and right. so we, we mean business. They should take him out next. That is my personal view. Uh, and of course, if they can get Sinwar. But what's troubling is, again, the American administration, the Biden-Harris administration, want to make sure that Hamas lives to fight another day. This is the sixth time Hamas has attacked Israel. The previous five times, they got the ceasefires when the Israelis fought back. Now they want it again, despite the fact that Hamas has said there will be more October 7th. The American government, who funded Iran to be able to do this by easing and, and, and removing even the embargo, uh, oil embargoes, um, the Americans paid for this to happen. It was financed indirectly by the United States courtesy of Biden and Harris and Jake Sullivan and Austin and co. That's what they did. Um, and now they want to make sure Hamas lives to fight another day. We have to understand how corrupt and how evil the American government is. The American government is no better than any other despotic government in the world. It sponsored radical Islamic terror. It made this war possible. They withdrew from Afghanistan. That sent the signal that Biden was as weak as Obama was when Obama drew the red line in the sand 
in Syria over the biological weapons and then did nothing except cower because he is a coward. They saw that unlike Trump, Biden is a spineless. In the character of Obama, he's an invertebrate and they can do what they want. This also gave impetus, of course, to Putin's aggression in the Ukraine. When Putin went into, into Crimea, Biden did, uh, Obama did virtually nothing. They know they're dealing with weak men in the White House, and they want another weak man in the White House. That is why there have been reports today that Iran is trying to do everything it can to cyber influence the American elections against Trump and in favor of Harris. Harris is the candidate Iran wants. That is what is really happening. But the media is not going to tell you the obvious truth. They will yeah. not even report the obvious truth. Yeah, they might not need Iranian help. They're, they're good enough to do it themselves, the, uh, the setting up the election. So, David Lister, real quick, the um, what do you think of the Houthis and uh, the flooding in, um, in Yemen? If you've seen the footage, it is absolutely insane what happened. And especially hit the Houthi area where the terrorists were located and they got wiped out. Some people are saying climate change, either that's what the problem, climate change. Some people are blaming Mossad. Uh, maybe the hand, um, maybe another hand is in the works there. Uh, what do you think? Well, it's always the Jews, as if uh, you ask the Houthis. So um, they claim two women were blew up bombs for uh, the Mossad. But people have been geoengineering uh, the skies to get rains in the desert. You know, it's actually, I believe if I remember uh, some of my Quran is that when the desert blooms is when the Messiah is coming. So these yeah. guys are bringing, bringing rain. And we remember what happened in Dubai. They brought some rain, but it was more like a flood. I don't oh, know yeah, they destroyed the climate. They destroyed yeah, the, the climate the, the for sure. The desert just got washed away. I don't think you uh, can grow when uh, when your, your grass is going down the river. But it's the same thing. They're just, they're wanting this. They're they're wanting rain, but uh, if they're geoengineering it, this is what you know. It can't they can't get it right. So, yeah, this is in the Hadramat area where the Houthis have a very uh, strong enclave. Jacob, what do you think? That's a uh, terrorist wiped out. Yeah, I think it's Genesis twelve three. I'll curse them that curse thee. I think it's God's judgment on Islam. Yeah, this is a big blow to the Houthis who are preparing for other attacks. Obviously, they have drone attacks into the, uh, in, into the, obviously against ships, against Israel. Uh, the, you know, we've we've seen the uh, the attacks on um, ships that are coming into the port of Eli. Uh, quite a bit of stuff that they've done over the past year, which really the U.S. has done nothing against their attacks on ships. Uh, another country, Jacob, that is. Um, doing some things that, you know, obviously they're nefarious, is Turkey. They're now yes. joining the, uh, South Africa and going and filing at the ICJ against Israel and against Netanyahu for genocide, against genocide. Yes. So do we take Turkey seriously? You take him seriously, but we have to remember what he and South Africa are doing is attempting to deflect from their internal economic crisis that Erdogan has caused. And the ANC has caused in South Africa. Those countries are in serious, serious economic trouble. Hyperinflation and basically going into national insolvency. Um, and there's a need to divert public attention away from what's happening internally by amplifying external issues. And Israel is the convenient, easy way to do it. We should not downplay or ignore that as a factor in understanding why both South Africa and Turkey are at present doing what they're doing. Turkey also has a history from the Ottoman Empire of dominating the Arab world or dominating most of the Islamic world. They would like to have a reascent of that, a reascension of that. And they see a vacuum that has emerged since the Arab Spring in the Arab world, creating an opportunity for Turkey. Turkey's problem, of course, has been its economy. But they do see 
an opportunity to try to reassert the old Ottoman, not the Ottoman Empire itself, but something in the character of it, a rebuilding of, of, of what Turkey had once represented as the number one power in the Muslim world because it had a link with Europe, a geographical link with Europe. Um, Turkey has always been the bridge between Europe and, and, and the Orient. That is how Erdogan sees Turkey's manifest destiny, for want of a better term. But he realizes for that to happen, there must be an Islamicization of a secular Turkish society. And he's doing that. Yeah, it, it's laughable to think how the ICJ is treated. This is my own perspective on it. When South Africa um, put a, when, when yeah. the ICJ went after Putin, put it that way, and there was a meeting in South Africa, the BRICS meeting, and Putin was, well, basically was told not to come, otherwise they will arrest him in South Africa. The president of South Africa said, oh, it doesn't matter what the ICJ say. It doesn't matter what the international court, you know, criminal court says. Uh, we're just going to take out Putin for lunch and we're just going to have a good time. And we don't know yeah. if we have, you know, we don't know if we ended up going there. There were some diplomats at the at the tarmac. We don't know. Now that it's against Israel, oh, we have to take the ICJ serious. Oh, my goodness, this is terrible. We have to apprehend that. To, yeah, we have to do this. And so, again, it's a two-tier system. No doubt the ICJ is never to be taken seriously in the, under those terms, but only when they wanted to bring those terms. And uh, But speaking of Putin, uh, today, before we got on, uh, he issued a statement, and I wanted to read the statement real quick. He has asked Iran to postpone an Israeli strike, postpone an Israeli strike, and he has offered to mediate. He's offered to mediate. Jacob, any thoughts on that? He's He's got big issues right now because uh, it looks like the um, Ukrainian, um, obviously, Ukrainian forces went into the area of yes. Kurdish. And took over a plant, took over a nuclear plant, and he's very concerned about that. Um, now he's backtracking from supporting his, uh, supporting Iran with weapons. Now he wants to mediate a delayed strike. What do you think? I think everything he does is, again, to deflect his internal issues and the problem in the quagmire he's got himself into in the Ukraine. I don't think there's anything he says or does that can be viewed outside of that number one priority. Um, why is he interested in brokering a peace in the Middle East, given the situation in Ukraine? It's, 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 it's ludicrous. It's, it's ludicrous. He does not carry that much weight with the Israelis anymore, uh, certainly. He has an Islamic threat of his own that he prefers to try to keep at bay because um, he doesn't want another Chechenian war. He doesn't want something else going wrong on this fighting in the Ukraine. He doesn't want to be fighting Muslims at the same time. That's another one of his motives. Um, basically, Putin is a man who's painted himself into a corner. Do you Maybe. think he's trying to find a little relevance or something somewhere to, because of his isolation, Jacob? Well, again, in, in, in the post-Cold War realities of Russia, Putin has always wanted to reestablish Russia as a global player. And so the answer to that is yes, obviously yes. But that is not his number one priority at the moment. His number one priority is the quagmire he's gotten himself into. David Lister wanted to ask you this. Um, many have uh, speculated that because of the attack in the cursed Kurdish uh, curse region, and um, which is basically Ukraine border with Russia, and they went into Russian territory, that this now detracts Putin from the once original statement that he was going to support Iran if a if they attacked Israel with weapons. Now he's got a big problem because that nuclear plant can be used against him. Now yeah. all of a sudden he's at peace. He's a man of peace. Now what do you think? Well, I Russia of anybody knows what it's like to uh, have a nuclear reactor blow up. We remember the Ukraine. Yep. Chernobyl, yeah. Yeah, Chernobyl. And the bravery, actually, of the miners that uh, helped put that thing down and contain it. But uh, to this, this is a big play by Ukraine. It's a good move on a chessboard to try to 
may be forcing to come to the peace table. Yeah, it's disrupting a lot of things. Yeah, you know, so it's just one other, but nobody, you know, as soon as he wants to come, Ukraine doesn't want to come because they both want to keep the money flowing. You know, it's just, it's just crazy. And I don't even know if our government would want peace with him till mm. right yet. You know, right. it's just, just what a mess. But he's, I mean, Turkey up there, you, you mentioned the Kurdish. Okay. If you remember back in October, I think recently, uh, Turkey went after Kurdish, Kurdish people. Mm. Started bombing them. So they've got troubles in their own backyard in northern Iraq, uh, along the, the Kurdish homeland. And so lots of pieces all on the board, all moving, everybody wanting war. Yeah. Jacob, this has made a lot of Christians and a lot of prophecy teachers uh, of, of different forms and different uh, pers persuasions about the Gog and Magog invasion. It's something oh, up all yeah. the time. Iran. Russia, oh. Turkey, they're all there. Uh, do, do you still believe that that would happen? I mean, any, that's the number one question we get all the time. Does Jacob think Ezekiel 38, 39 is going to happen now? As I've said consistently, the main Gog and Magog conflict must be at the end of the millennial reign of Christ, because that is the one the New Testament addresses. The New Testament does not address any other one. That is not to say there will not be a prior one that partially fulfills those prophecies or foreshadows the ultimate post-millennial fulfillment of it because the battlefield debris is being cleaned up for seven months and right. so forth. There are reasons to argue there could be. But again, this is not the first time people have said that about Gog and Magog. Um, I can think of at least five other times when people have begun speculating yeah. about Gog and Magog. Yeah, I remember, you know, just when the Soviet Union was still around, people would, yes. you know, write books on it. How Lindsay wrote books on it, Chuck Missler wrote books on it yes. regarding that. And now we fast forward some 20 years later, and it still hasn't happened the way they described it. Uh, Jacob, okay. but the other ones that they mentioned in Jeremiah chapter 49, the attack on Elam, uh, the judgment yeah. I should say, where the nuclear reactors are in Iran. So is, is that a valid proposition that a lot of prophecy teachers uh, say that this could happen now? It is a valid possibility. Okay. Yeah. It is a valid possibility. But again, we have to first examine what historical fulfillments have those prophecies had already in history? True. Okay. True. What about the Isaiah 17 with Damascus? Is it's every article that I've read, Damascus comes up over and over and over again that this is the it's been the hub. Assad's been the hub of and this is the closest in history that Damascus has ever come to being obliterated. Right. And I, Isaiah 17, 1, it doesn't mean ca captured or conquered. It means obliterated, destroyed. Yeah, yeah it's and the same word. Is, this is the closest historically, that it's ever come to. Yeah, this is a same, it uses the same word as Sodom and Gomorrah. It would basically stop from existing. Um, Jacob, I want to switch gears closer to home, closer to where you are, and, and it has to be very concerned. And it's the UK riots, United Kingdom riots in England, and the civil war that is uh, brewing and happening. The prime minister gaslighting, literally, native Brits who have had enough of the Islamic immigration there and asylum seekers that come in, you know, infinitum, it seems like, and violent mobs that have attacked young girls, that have attacked Native Brits, that have killed three, uh, three young girls, three, you know, babies, in, in my opinion, three infants, uh, recently in Southport. And, um, well, the, the attacker is going to be tried next year. But here's Steimer, the prime minister, who say, whoever is protesting against Muslim, we will be prosecuting them right away. And there's some that are really, really yes. this is unbelievable. Oh, yes. The coverage is absolutely gone nuts because it is all geared toward, look what the native Brits are doing. They're terrible. They're terrorists. And look at the Muslim yes. community. Poor them. We have to protect them. First of all, much the same as Garland turned the FBI into a political police force, uh, into an American political Gestapo. Um, against the political opponents 
of the Biden administration's policies on indoctrinating children with transgenderism in school at young ages and so forth and being put on terrorist watch lists by a corrupt Justice Department. The same thing has happened in Britain. You've had a politicization of, of the British police. They've become a, a political police force. Uh, this has been true for some time to a degree, but not to the degree it is now. What Britain has, by political design, is a two-tier police force, a two-tier police. When you had Muslims rioting a few weeks ago in London, yes, yeah. on video, we're going to kill Jews. They were saying it in front of policemen. We're going to kill Jews. They were not arrested. They were not arrested. But when British patriots stand up against Islamofascism, they're the great criminals. Yeah, today, exactly. The Labour Party and the, and the mainstream British media, which is a political voice for the Labour Party, orchestrated national counter demonstrations against what they call the extreme right. Now, most of these demonstrators are not extreme right. They're simply British patriots fed up with Islamofascism. That's right. If you look at what Starmer said, we're going to protect the mosques and we're going to protect the Muslims. He wouldn't protect the Jews. In yeah, fact, or synagogues or churches. He wouldn't, he wouldn't even protect the British. He is an evil, evil man. Of the Jacob, how did he get in there? How did he get in there? How did he get in there? Because of the incredible failures of the British Conservative Party, mm. of a Hindu prime minister who was worthless, and a prime minister before him who was worthless, and Boris Johnson, who was a gross disappointment. The failures of the Conservative Party made it possible for them to get elected. That's how it came about. That is only how it came about. It was the Thank failure of the Conservative Party to be conservative. Mm. The conservative look, Party, stop being conservative, and this is what you have. The conservatives look just like the Labour Party. So what's That's the correct. I mean, they, it's like the, like the rhinos are the same as the Democrats in America. There's no difference between George Bush and a Democrat or or Romney and a Democrat. None. Just <laughs> conservatives. David Lister, I wanted to ask you this. Why does the media in the UK, and we're talking a widespread, wide net here, sound exactly like the government? I mean, it literally parrots everything the government says. So you really could never truly get an unbiased, a truly unbiased, factual opinion of what's happening because the media just happens to be parroting the, 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 the UK government. Why is that? Well, a lot of the media over there BBK One and all the other stations they have, that is that is the government paying for all that. <laughs> so unlike here in America, where we have a free press owned by billionaires, so hopefully people can put that together. <laughs> you know, that, uh, <laughs> did you get it, Jake? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So anyway, it's just they... The media has been bought and paid for since World War II, Operation Paperclip, other operations that they just, the CIA has used news media to create a narrative, to create uh, a situation, whatever. And it, it hasn't, uh, and it hasn't stopped here. And other countries follow that program. And so over there, the media wants a job. If they step outside of uh, the boundaries, no check, no job. But even, you know, so it's pretty simple. Yeah, I have to remind everyone when we talked about the election just a few weeks ago, I mean, this thing has erupted within weeks of the election. And uh, it was a snap election for the 4th of July. And Jacob, not even a, about a month later, yeah. you have literally a civil war erupting. Yeah. Uh, with the police. Now you have the UK new justice minister, Shabana Mahmoud, that has been, you know, oh, awesome. chancellor. Yeah. A uh, free Palestine activist. If there's any chance these uh, British citizens, these British patriots are going to get any justice in that system. I highly no. doubt it. Not. Not. Yeah. Britain can no longer be considered truly democratic, and neither can the United States. Yeah. What's happening on one side of the Atlantic parody is what's happening on the other. Yeah. A political police force. That that is that has been politically weaponized, a politically weaponized judiciary, 
a media that is in league with corrupt government uh, suppression of free, of free speech and of a branding of patriots as being extremists. In the United States, they're calling them white supremacists. In Great Britain, they're calling them far-right activists. These things are obviously lies, but that is the gaslighting. That is the narrative. That's what's being pushed out by government and media, and that's what's happening. Yeah. We have to remember, America and Britain are under God's judgment. They've turned away from their Judeo-Christian heritage, and they are under God's judgment. Yeah, they want to arrest Elon Musk for putting all these, uh, allowing people to put all these uh, videos and articles and footage of what's really happening because there's no real UK right. uh, media, truly true media. Uh, maybe GB News. I think GB News is one of the ones that have been the least yes. and honest and been even yes. have the girls who have been, uh, you know, attacked by Muslim gangs in the past had them on there uh, to give an account of what the police had failed to do for, for many years. But Jacob, you've seen the rise of a police state in the UK, but also the speech laws. I want to go back to the Communication Act in 2003 under your prime minister at the time was Tony Blair. And I don't know what you were doing in 2003, Jacob, but this was passed. I didn't and, like Tony Blair. I know you did, and I know, but he was yours. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, the Communications Act in 2003, and this had, you know, I'm, I'm reading it straight out of here, section 306, uh, sorry, 127, the un, uh, improper use of public electronic communications network. And at that time, nobody really knew what they were building. But what they were really building is the fact that if you use any of the networks via telephone, via um, text, via uh, apps, which were not very popular at the time, but they are now via email. If you use any of those networks and, and they found they find those communications to be offensive, you, you could be tried, you could be charged, you could be going to jail. And they have visited uh, many UK citizens over the past five years uh, um, on social media posts. Now it's being restarted again, being brought up again, and now being some real teeth given to it. And now they're going after uh, British citizens. Amendment yeah. Communication Acts 2003. People can read it, Section 127. Jacob, this is scary stuff. It's yeah. even worse than this. You have an Islamo fascist mayor of London who should not be the mayor of London. He should not even be allowed in the UK, in my opinion. He's a danger to British democracy. But he wants to make it an arrestable offense to criticize Islam. Um. Well, Muslims are allowed to get away with the most vilifying remarks imaginable about Christians, about Jews, about Israel. He says that criticism of Islam should be arrestable yes. um, and prosecutable. That's right. This is a man who's an enemy of democracy. Yeah. What this a horrible is, again, double standard, too. You can not say anything about a Jew, but you no. can't say anything about yeah. a Muslim. The stupidity of... The people in Britain who are marching in support and defense of Islamofascism, voting for their own death, this is the stupidity of the left. But again, it parodies the same stupidity you see in the United States of those who would vote for Harris, Obama, people of that nature, Biden. It's the same exact thing. Um, we did a teaching some years ago quite a number of years ago, where we said this was going to happen. It was the teaching we did on Daniel and the lion's den, when the satraps and conspirators simply wanted to get a law on the books that seemed innocuous at first to set up Daniel and frame him. Once they got the law on the books, then they used it for a political conspiracy against Daniel. All we can hope for is that once again, the God of Israel will close the mouths of the lions in the den. But that is what we're seeing. It is exactly what happened to Daniel. Just get the law on the books and it will be used against conservatives, against Zionists, against Jews, and against Christians. That is the reality. Yeah, the I heard a word. Yeah, uh, go ahead. I heard a word um, just in the last couple of days, and I, I've never heard the word before. And I kind of think it really fits. The word is called uh, lawfare. 
It's basically weapon, oh, yeah, the yeah. weapon thing of the law. That's and, right. Um, yeah, oh, uh, it's a good that's word, isn't it? That's what's happening. Lawfare. The UK government is actually considering extradition charges to those social media influencers who are playing a role and arrest them and charge them with terrorism. They could even extradite them from the United States. So this is a wide law that they want to uh, uh, put together globally to try to get anybody that posts, comments, social media, who criticizes Daimler, who criticizes Islam in the UK. What's next, uh, Jacob, for believers in the UK? I mean, Make no really mistake is- about it. If you have a Harris administration, a Harris, you know, Paul's well, administration, the, the Justice Department will be politically directed to cooperate with the British authorities and extradite Americans to Great Britain to face criminal charges in violation of the American First Amendment. That, it, it, There's no First Amendment in Britain, so no, they can't prosecute you easily in America, but they'll right. happily extradite you to Britain on an extradition warrant. I, I have no doubt that Harris would do that. A nice of them. A nice of them. Uh, there's a Jay, you got a comment? Just real quickly, uh, I think we need to stop uh, managing um, and talking about it in the terms that they want to say. This is not, this isn't hate speech. This isn't uh, a law to, you know, uh, unpopularize or, or punish people. We, we, we need to call it what it is. It's the thought police. It's the yeah. Gestapo. The Gestapo was the infancy of of the Reich. And what we're seeing now is the mature adolescence of this totalitarian system that they're putting in place. This totalitarian, for sure. You cannot yeah. comment against the government. Yeah. The guy's that is the God-given right Muslim. of every free person. That's right. They had a Hamas sign. Hamas is a terrorist organization. He's holding it. Don't attack the Jews. Hamas is a terrorist organization. They arrest him. They yeah, throw him on the ground. They arrest him. While Muslim gangs are yelling, Allahu Akbar, where are the Jews, where are the Jews? And the police literally lead them down the road to face those protesters against Islam. So they, they had this collision and the police yes. backed out of it. It's completely mayhem. It's completely that, mayhem. That, that, is, that is why I say we don't need to be giving them the honorific of a person that's actually holding up the law, which is a police right. officer. These, like Jacob said, they're political Gestapo that are actually following the orders of politization. Politization. That's right. That's right. In fact, uh, you, in social media, they, you can't really look up these terms because in, uh, if you look go to Google, if you go to search engines, uh, if you look up migrants in the UK or um, the, the rides in the UK, it usually shows, for the most part, usually shows uh, native Brits who are protesting against the Islamization of their country. And they're calling those the, the far right yeah. attack. Muslims, uh, far right attack, uh, attack asylum seekers. So yes. this is, uh, you're yeah. having complete, uh, um, you know, disconnect from reality. Go ahead, David. Oh, yeah, well, I don't know if anybody, you want to go, David? Go ahead. Okay, you, you got this, David? <laughs> okay. I don't know if anybody saw the police press conferences that <laughs> the UK had. They were opening them all with a praise to Allah. With yep. uh, Islamic yep. greetings. Yep. And so they told you what court they're in right there. Right. If if America does not pay attention to what's happening there. Yeah, because it's coming here. They want to come here. It's only going to be, I think, a little bit different here. Britain, which every Briton was supposed to own an, a firearm since I think like the 14 or 1500s uh, when they were still primitive. Gave the right of that away. America still has the right, and American has the right to own a firearm. In fact, we have 120 guns for every hundred people, so it it could get bloodier. It could get worse than over there, you know. So it's. I, I hope not. I hope not. I mean, I know there's a war against Mr. Trump because the World Economic Forum knows that he would like to end them. And that's a problem. The full force of the whole world's government, it seems like, is against this one man. 
<laughs> yes. It's very interesting to me that the continent uh, that once fought against Islam in an yep. attempt to defend itself is now completely open to a complete yep. conquest and, and a Muslim crusade against them. <laughs> No, absolutely. David, did you have something? I don't know. Uh, I know David wants first, but go back to him. Okay, I was just getting back to um, the point Jay made about, you know, being able to criticize the government. Well, one good thing, at least in the U.S., you're founding your documents. Um, You've got it there. Government for the people, by the people. It's kind of like uh, you criticize the government, you're criticizing yourselves. It's kind of... You can use those documents back on them, basically. Well, we used to be able to, but when you get a government that doesn't care about the Constitution anymore, uh, yeah, that's the problem. Look, we yeah. were we've turned away from God, as Jacob pointed out a little while, and so people are voting these people that have not had a platform that had contained God. Since I think Clinton's day, they voted God out of their democratic yeah, platform. Yeah. So God's gone, and He is the one that gives inalienable rights. So they believe all rights come from the government, yeah. and that becomes a problem because whatever the government gives you with this hand, they take away with this one. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Want to just mention real quick? We're about an hour into already a prior episode, so uh, we've only touched on a few subjects. So uh, I want to move it along. But Jacob, one last thing: in the UK, Steimer, who came into power, saying the Labour Party will always stand for Israel, and now he just uh, wants to take away the export licenses to suspend it, uh, for sending well, weapons he, to the Jewish state. So your thoughts on that? He's a politician. He's a liar. Um, he, his justice minister is a Muslim. Um, he's got pro-Palestinian activists in his, in, in his government. Um, you can't believe anything he says. The only thing that can control him is influence from the United States. But if the United States moves to the left, there's nothing going to control him. Or if it moves further to the left. Under the British law, did they have an opportunity to get this guy out as soon as possible? You would have confidence or something like that. There, there is a way to do that, but that means that the majority of parliament would have to vote to, to have him removed from office and hold elections. And the la- only way the Labour Party would do that is if they had gone so low in their popularity that they were afraid of losing the next election. In other words, get rid of him. What what the Democrats did to Biden. Okay, you can do you you can do through parliamentary procedure, right? In, in Britain, right? You can exactly. do it through parliamentary because you have a parliamentary government instead of a presidential democracy. Correct, that's true. You, you can do what they did to Biden. You absolutely you, totally only by do. parliamentary means. Yeah, not by, do. By coup d'état, right? But we'll then, the way they have to be afraid they're they're going to lose. Well, you know, will they do it? I don't know, because uh, he just got in. But, you know, they, you had uh, the other prime minister who only lasted, what, two weeks? And she was out of there. Yeah, but she was in the same party. The, you see, it's the party that gets elected, not the individual. No, I, I understand. I understand. But I'm yeah. saying it, 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 we've had presidents where it's just it's it's a very short stay because they yes. have no confidence in the prime yes. minister. So, uh, you know, uh, it, it's not good. Uh, one thing that Europe is doing, and this is not a good thing either, it's uh, the country of Austria is an example of them. They're offering or they're issuing uh, digital IDs in Austria. Digital IDs, you can download this uh, ID and they give it incentives. Of course, you can get about $100 if you, uh, so for social service programs, uh, but you can only get those $100 if you get an app. And the only way you get that app is by downloading the digital ID. And they say this is for security. There's, you know, they see the Islamic invasion. They want to provide security, Jacob, but you go from one to the other. You go from the extreme of being violently attacked by Islam to now being controlled and surveilled by the uh, European Union. Of course. This is this is the state of Europe. That this is this is why I believe Europe is at war with itself, but they're setting up step by step a police state. You can see exactly Matthew 24, 
Luke 21 coming into being exactly what Jesus said would happen. We've been saying for years, kiss democracy goodbye, kiss just kiss independent judicial justice goodbye, kiss those things goodbye. We are under God's judgment, and we have brought these things on ourselves, on ourselves as nations and societies. That is true of Britain, it's true of America, it's true of Canada, it's true of Australia and New Zealand, and it's true of Europe. Maybe did they still have those uh, digital IDs in, um, in in Australia that you can download? Is I think it's a government app. Is that what they have? Uh, yeah. Look, <laughs> they'll be pushing it again. They backed off the the digital ID a little bit at the moment, but that was only because of uh, tech problems. Once they get that sort of out again, they'll be pushing it again. Yeah, because I heard Albanese is a big fan of it. He loves it. Uh, <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. Well, he loves a lot of things. But that's what he loves. He loves those things. So, uh, I want to switch gears real quick, Jacob, to the uh, the attack on Bangladesh. The Hindus in Bangladesh are being fiercely hunted down by Muslims in Bangladesh. No words from I haven't seen anything from the UN, nor any government, nor any protesters, nor anything on the New York City protests or college campuses of the extermination of Hindus in Bangladesh. Jacob, your thoughts? This is nothing new in the Muslim Hindu world. Uh, but now it's happening. We have access to those information, but they're choosing not to show it. Precedents are being set. Traditionally, Bangladesh was a moderate Islamic nation. There was very little by way of Islamic fundamentalism in Bangladesh. Very little. That has changed. Among the Bengali population of England and of London, including the mayor, you find an increasingly intolerant Islamic radicalization taking place in East London, in, in, in the Bengali communities. And that is being both exported back to Bangladesh and being influenced by what's happening in Bangladesh. Bangladesh is losing its place as a moderate country. Hindus initially supported the independence of Bangladesh when it had been East Pakistan. Right. It seceded from Pakistan. It, Hindus supported it. I remember the concert for Bangladesh held by George Harrison of the Beatles at the behest of Ravi Shankar, the sitar player who died in, in San Diego of all places. But he um, was a Bengali Hindu. He was a Bengali Hindu. And his musicians were a mixture of Hindus and, and Muslims, like Ustad Ali Kabar Khan. Um, there, there was a harmony. And the Hindus supported the independence of Bangladesh. That is now going. The kind of hatred you see for Hindus in Pakistan and the kind of hatred between Muslims and Hindus you see in India has now come to Bangladesh. The moderate female prime minister has been pushed out of office in a coup d'etat. My real concern is the churches have been growing. I mean... Right. Evangelical born again saved Christian churches have been growing in Bangladesh. They've actually been growing, and they will almost inevitably become targets at some future point if this continues. Continues, yeah. So keep those believers in prayers, please. If you if you're watching here, and, and we thank you for watching, catching up, episode one ninety four. Uh, there's some heavy stuff going on, and one of those things is persecution of believers, not only in the UK, uh, but also outside the UK and the US yes. as well. But Bangladesh is definitely a place that we need to definitely keep in prayer. But Jacob, I'm surprised. Uh, Hindus being massacred, and you have a uh, somebody who's running for president of the United States who has Hindu roots, and she says nothing about it, like if something even happening. Yes, she ran as a senator, the first Hindu senator, and she was uh, you know uh, attorney general of California. She was uh, promoted as being the first Hindu uh, of, of that ranking officer. So now doesn't even mention anything. Not a so, Hindu, so, a Hindu prime minister of Ireland, Radhika. He's half, half Hindu. You've had a Hindu prime minister of the UK. Right. Uh, what does that tell you? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. The, 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 you don't hear anything. And you don't get anything from them. But I did want to talk about that because according to what we've seen, like you can go to predicted.org. Uh, Jacob, and you talked about some of the polls earlier. 
that she seems to be on the way to victory. Now, we don't know what the polls are going to be and what they're rigged and all that stuff, but predicted.org seemed to have been you know, somewhat accurate over the past few things that they that they bet on. This is people, smart money going to Kamala Harris to win. I think she's got 57, 58 cents on the dollar that she will win versus Trump, 43 cents on the dollar that he would win. Uh, but this is crazy stuff. She's now picked a VP. Uh, Jacob, you want to talk about him? Mr. Uh, Mr. Tim, I have a guy who put tampon dispensers in boys' laboratories and schools. You have someone who endorsed Olert, an anti-Zionist. No, an anti-Zionist is also an anti-Semite, a radical Muslim for Congress. You have someone who did nothing with the George Floyd riots as governor, not before the National Guard. You, you, and and supported an organization along with Harris that released rioters without charge. You have for the bail. You have walls who took taxpayer money, making Minnesota a refuge state, giving not only free health care, but free college educations free university educations to people with no legal right to be in the country and handing the taxpayers the bill for it. A man who was outspokenly a socialist, he, he says, doesn't matter if you call it socialism or not. Communist. Yeah. And yet there are people stupid enough to vote for him. You cannot convert people from their own stupidity. You cannot take stupid Jews I'm not talking about intelligence. I'm talking about stupid ones, like Dreyfus, the actress, the billionaire's daughter, or or Ben Stiller. Stupid people are going to campaign for Harris, despite the fact that you've got this guy who endorses Olmert for Congress in Minnesota. Yeah, they ignore the anti-Semitism, not just anti-Zionism, anti semitism That is how stupid left-wing Jews are. You have stupid left-wing women. One of the most stupid women I've ever seen in my life is this one who's called Watts. Uh, <laughs> white women for Harris. Shannon Watts. She says, check your white privilege. You have no right to raise your voice against any black person. Because somebody is black, you can't question them when they're running for president. This is a stupid, stupid white woman. You've got stupid, stupid Jews, stupid, stupid people who are sowing the seeds of their own destruction and are too stupid to know it. Hmm. You can't save people from their own stupidity. But I come back to the fact, it is not just stupidity. It is judgment. God has given these people over. Yeah. Insane mind. Yeah, there's even a group, but uh, I think, Davy, if you want to comment on it, David, Davy, uh, Christians for Kamala, really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you'll love this one, Jacob. Um, a lot of your old favorites there Brian McLaren, Doug Paget, uh, Brandon Robertson. Yeah, so who's who of <laughs> the most woke and most uh, nauseating? Uh, yeah, Brian McLaren, who performed the same sex wedding for his son and his son's husbands. Yep. Yeah. So there's a, a they've got a conference coming up. Uh, Christians for for Kamala. Yeah. Oh, so that man. that'll be a real doozy, I'm sure. Nah, gonna yeah. be. David Lister, I wanted to ask you this. Usually, in the way political parties work here in America, usually when you pick a VP, you normally try to balance the ticket. That's really been the norm. And I, I know we're not in a norm time. We're not even close to anything of that. Uh, but normally you would bring somebody who would balance it out, maybe a little bit different on certain things. Maybe if you're too radical on one, you bring one who kind of stabilizes the, 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 the ticket a little bit more. This case, oh my, he is Maoist. He is a Maoist. He is a, a, a very much pro-Islam. He is anti-Jewish. He's anti-Zionist, anti-Jewish. He's a leftist, hardcore communist on the same party, on the same ticket as a hardcore communist herself, uh, Kamala. So it is it is well known now that this is this is the left. This is the hard, extreme anti-Jewish left. 
why? I mean, are they going for it? Because you normally would maybe stabilize something a little bit more moderate. Absolutely. That's been the history. But we need to be unburdened from the past. <laughs> okay, as she said. So oh, but to build on Jacob's point, it, this stupidity is not congenitally stupid. It's just that they have made themselves stupid. We've talked about, Jacob and I have talked about, they made themselves stupid. And so now God is turning them over to their own choices. And of course, they have this political power and they believe their time is now. And so this is uh, really, really bad. I mean, you wouldn't, you know, I was just listening to Shapiro, I would say, you know, which is a governor from Pennsylvania, that he would probably be the one so that they right. could capture Jewish votes and things like this. But if these people that continually blind themselves will just keep voting for them, why not just get somebody even worse right. than you are? Yeah. You know, was, he, yeah. he redefines socialism as, whole, as uh, what do you say, another man's uh, only... Uh, Neighborliness. Neighborliness. Yeah, he's absolutely. I've never known Marxists to be too good of a neighbor, but <laughs> I've had Marxist neighbors. I, I didn't even get a hello. Yeah, yeah. hellos. <laughs> yeah, but they're now that they have this ticket, and if they do win, Christians and Jews better watch out. You better watch what you say. You better be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. And hopefully, t too many, uh, not too many of your remarks are out on the internet. <laughs> yes, maybe that's Whoops, too, late. too late for too us. Late. Yeah, that's too late. Uh, Jacob, real quick before we uh, finish here, we got one more topic: is the fact that, like Steimer in, in the UK, she's open. Kamala is very open to an Israel arms embargo. I know you you yes. talked about it at the beginning, but it was we wanted to do it for the end, is that she is prepared to meet with activists called the Uncommitted National Movement, uh, which is a very pro-Islam, pro-Palestinian group, to discuss arms embargo to Israel. Yes, she's she not only open to it, she's going to promote it. Of course, remember, Obama was anti-Israel. He was anti-Israel. He proved that with the UNESCO vote when he lobbied countries to vote against Israel, saying Israel has no claims to its historical religious sites. The Wailing Wall, the one, it, it, yeah, Israel has no claim to it. Obama lobbied countries like New Zealand and Britain to vote against Israel. Obama's an enemy of Israel. Um, stupid Jews supported him, but he's an enemy of Israel. Um, well, Harris is that and more so. Uh, and again, the stupidity of American Jews, like like uh, Schumer, Schumer, and, and 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 Shapiro, of course, and Pritzker in, in in Illinois, and and Schiff. above above all, shift. The stupidity of American Jews is unbelievable, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. They may as well as I've said. Sew a yellow star on their jacket and pay their own train fare to Auschwitz. Bon voyage. Yeah. When progress begin against Jews, I hope to God the first Jews they kill are the ones who voted Democrat. Jacob, because wasn't the, they chose it. They chose their own death. Jacob, wasn't the brown shirts, the, the thugs that led the charge for Hitler and everything, and then when he got ready to take power, those were the first ones they got rid of. So if the pattern repeats, you may get your wish. It's yeah, useful but, idiots. Yeah. Look, I'm not letting any that's... Jews get killed. No, no. We don't saying, want anybody to I'm get killed. I'm simply saying if Jews do get killed, it should be the ones who voted for their own death to die, not innocent Jewish Americans. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jacob, I don't want my family killed. Yeah, I want to read this to you. This is from uh, Donald Trump. And this is, you know, people think all kinds of stuff about Trump and even Christians don't like him and stuff like that. And people have the right to do so at this time. It's still a free country here. But he wrote this and it's kind of interesting. Netanyahu of Israel had a terrible, insulting meeting with Kamala Harris, who refused 
to even preside over the Congress during his speech, which was true. Sure. She didn't even show up. She didn't even want to preside over it, which is the obligation of the VP. Rarely such a thing has happened. Her ineptness will pro prolong the war and delay the hostage release, which is absolutely true. That's why we start every Catching Up episode for some time now about the hostage. The same people that embarrass us in Afghanistan are going to embarrass us in Israel, telling Israel not to fight uh, any longer with Hamas. Don't forget October 7th. And he says, any Jewish person that votes for Kamala or the Democrats should immediately have their head examined. Um, pretty funny. Jacob, what do you think? He's telling He's only saying the absolute truth. Sounds like and Jacob Pratt, the only isn't he? one saying it. Yeah. <laughs> For a moment, I thought, is this Jacob write this or did uh, Trump write this? But anyway, um, should have their head examined. Some Jews are very upset with Trump. They're more upset with Trump saying that than they're actually supporting, um, you know, they're actually going along and supporting Harris, who is not for the Jews. And I don't know why they keep going in that direction, but I suppose you have to. It must be a spiritual blindness. It is. It is. Has to God has given them over to. Speaking of spiritual blindness, uh, I want to finish the episode real quick with something that's happening with Christians, Christian influencers, and, and there's quite a bit of them on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok and stuff like that, but specifically to the young people. They're commenting, and I ran into this, and I played the video for you, Jacob, they're commenting on the two boxers are going to be fighting for Olympic gold uh, in the women's division that happened to be XY chromosome. I don't want to get banned from YouTube, so we'll put it that way. They have XY chromosomes. They have been, one of them has been banned in other competitions because of too high testosterone, and yet they claim to be women. They fight, they fight uh, against women, they have beaten a lot of women on the way here, and now you have Christians saying, don't criticize them. She's created in God's image. Speaking of Khalif, she's created in God's image. God uh, made her that way, and you have great amount of Christians who are saying, maybe we shouldn't criticize this. Maybe we're becoming too hateful because that's what they're being told. They're being gaslit to the, to the fact that if you criticize this, uh, men beating up women in a, in a ring as an Olympic sport, now you're being hateful. You're not being Christ-like. Jacob, your thoughts on that as we finish. I watched a video clip of one of these clowns saying that and saying we have to be Christian and it's Christian to love and we shouldn't criticize all this he was not speaking as a Christian. He was speaking as a religious imbecile. <laughs> Christian is defined by the Word of God, not by him or other such people like him. Moronic babblers. Scripture, the Word of God defines what is Christian. One, he made them male and female. Amen. This boxer, was he X or Y? Was he XY or double X? That is the question. We know that he failed to qualify genetically and on the basis of, 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 of testosterone. That's right. Secondly, secondly, women are the weaker vessel. The word of God says women are the weaker vessel, and he made them male and female. These people saying this are religious imbeciles. They do not speak like Christians. They speak like religious imbeciles, ignorant of the word of God, and there's nothing Christian about what they're saying, and quite possibly nothing Christian about them. Mm, very good. Jay, you, you and I watched this, and, and we we laughed about it, but we were really, you know, indignant at the fact that it's such, such, with such smugness you know, you're this, get off your soapbox. You can't criticize her. She's made wonderfully by God. Oh, I had a uh, Yeah, he said that while he was on his soapbox talking down to all the Christians. <laughs> I mean, the, the hypocrisy is is crazy. And the, and Jacob says it's 100 percent true. You can't define Christianity by the standards of the world. You have to define Christianity by the scriptures and Christians that want to talk about love and talk about tolerance and acceptance. They need to go back to the word and realize God made them male and female, period. Yeah, everything's being blurred, isn't it? Everything is being blurred. Uh, you, you can't have male or female. You can't have marriage. I mean, it is a slippery slope down depravity. And and, and I'm surprised. I, you know, maybe I shouldn't be. That, uh, but well, that how... young man, he, 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 yeah. he couldn't even tell what good or evil is. Yeah. yeah. That, that's that's, that's where it goes. Yeah. That's. The loss of the wisdom of God. This will be the yeah. same people that would say killing a baby is it's it's a humanitarian act. 
Yeah. You know, killing our baby, killing baby in the womb is a humanitarian act. No, um, we shouldn't we shouldn't preach to the mother and try to give her a conscience about her child. We shouldn't we shouldn't in any way burden her with any guilt over the death of a child. That's that's the type of Christianity this this gentleman I'm sure supports. I'm sure that's the type of Christianity that would vote for Harris because that's what she talks about being unburdened. You can't be unburdened. You have to be unburdened and all these things. So it, it's it's amazing to think how far Christianity has come into the West and not in a good way. How far it has come is it has apostatized. I'm really using that word apostasy in the right way, the not the other way. It, it is not a departure. It is a the, the, it, the fact it is a leaving the faith. It is a rebellion against the faith. In Spanish, it is a rebellion, a rebellion against Christ. That's the word of process. Yeah. Second Thessalonians chapter two. I don't know why people argue about the fact that we're going to go somewhere. Yes, sir. It's also. He's turned the truth into a lie when you listen to him because he's promising these Muslims, these people that are doing this to themselves, changing gender and everything, that God loves. Ultimately, he loves them enough to die for them, but they, unless they repent of their sins, that love of his forgiveness doesn't apply. And so he's giving these people false promises that they could die in their sins from. And that's the ultimate problem with what he's saying. He's leaving these people in darkness. It's a love that is sinful. And yeah. they, they, it's, not, it's not only him. There's several, several. Yeah, several. it's others. But I yeah. remember he was the main oh, yeah. leader of that, yeah, that absolutely. video. And these people, these people were fearfully and wonderfully made. But yeah. the thing is, you've rejected that and they've decided to um, redesign themselves or recreate themselves in their own image. Yeah, it's that synthetic uh, sexual identity that uh, they talk about, Sex, synthetic sexual identity. Go ahead, DJ. I, I just wanted to add, I'm going to plug real quick. Uh, if you are not plugged into Jacob's Thursday night um, Thursday Bible study, you should. Um, one of the questions was about uh, the time of Athanasius. So I looked up Athanasius, and he had a great, great quote that I'm going to give you right now. I love it. The world love it. is against the truth, then I'm against the world. That is where every single Christian should stand. If the world is against the truth, we need to be against the world. We need more Athanasius like that. I just Absolutely. Were, I wish they were in pulpits. Now, and I don't know where they find him in, you know, girls' bathrooms now. I don't know. It's, it's just, if you haven't read the book, um, what's that book? Uh, a Shepherd's for Sale by Megan Basham. Oh, boy. I think people are really mad. <laughs> uh, pastors are really mad because um, you'll find out. Just read the book. Uh, you'll find out that the shepherds have sold out to, uh, let's say, Curious George. And the money that's coming in to make them extreme left anti-Jewish, anti-Israel, anti-Christianity, and it's coming in by the millions into these organizations. So uh, what a mess we're in. But we have hope in Christ. Oh, but we have hope in Christ. And yes. that's, we shall not fear. We shouldn't be despondent of these things, which we trust in the Lord, no matter the difficulty of it. So we're going to end there on the catching up. We're going to go to backstage and take some questions. If you have not sent your questions in, send them now. And uh, on Rumble, and we'll be going there on backstage, getting some questions, heavy subjects today, good stuff. And uh, hopefully the questions continue on and uh, we appreciate your comments and questions. Send them in and Jacob, I promise you, we'll answer them and, uh, in just a few minutes. So God bless you guys. We'll see you soon. Hello, and thank you for watching Morial TV. There are so many things that are happening at Morial Ministries worldwide. From the Philippines to Japan, to India to Africa, and back to Europe and the United States, so many of our brothers and sisters are spreading the good news of Jesus Christ to this lost world. We are so thankful for your prayers. God has been faithful and has blessed us in so many ways. If you'd like to partner with our efforts abroad and at home, please take a moment to click the link in the description and help us as the Lord leads you. Thank you very much and God bless.